Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. August 7th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. (laughs) And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number uh, 705. And it's that time of the month. I would like you all to guess why I entitled everything Collateral Damage. You want us to guess? Just just take a shot in the dark. Guess what happened last month? In fact, the 31st of last month. I am going to make the, the ominous guess, which is that you were fired. Or let go, I should say. Gary? I I um I don't want to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to participate. Uh this this is feeling very ominous and uncomfortable. <laughs> Damon was close. So on the thirty first, uh uh everybody that we could jam into our training room Mm -hmm. um, of a certain portion of our group were told that uh, hey it's too costly to do these to uh, have a group in Austin so we're going to uh, take the, the contract away from your company mm-hmm. uh, as of the uh, the end of September. So I've got two months. Uh, okay. So here's the thing. It's, and this is why I say close. Because I work for a vendor. Right. Mm-hmm. That, that vendor has me on hired full time as an employee for them, which means if they have other projects for me, mm-hmm. I would transfer over to that project and I would be paid the same amount, same same pay, everything would stay the same. It's just I'd be working on another project. Got it. So as of right now, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I at least have two months. The hopes and dreams, of course, is something like who they're transferring the workflow to that doesn't isn't going to do a great job, so they want to keep us, but they don't want us to keep us on the site. So, uh, and I mean, we did spend a year and a half for the specific workflow that I'm currently working on um, working at home before they brought us all back into the office Uh so maybe who knows I don't know we don't know who knows but as of right now uh, I have no idea what will happen uh, after the end of September I think it okay if they are unable to find a project for me to transfer to 
uh, I think it was October 2nd, 1st, something like that, October something, then uh, they would release me from the company. Mm. Then I could apply for unemployment at that time. We don't know what's yeah. uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. Who knows? We don't know. Question marks. A lot of question marks across the board. Uh, there is one workflow that they, they are keeping on because they literally just started it, <laughs> and they asked to expand it. So it's like you're not just gonna let that go. I don't know how that workflow is gonna go, or anything like that. But. Here's why all of this, and I will say this, speculation uh, as to uh, why they determined that the cost might be an issue is other vendors that were in our same building, um, two of them actually had their workers go on strike. Mm. So this is why collateral damage. We believe, mm. I don't have any confirmation, so don't say this is what it is, mm -hmm. but that because of the strikes, it caused more, caused it to be cost more, and then, and, or they may have let those con uh, projects transfer to a different vendor or something that's not an awesome. So they're like, hey, we have very few vendors in that building, so we don't really want to use that building anymore. It's way too much maintenance, etc. So we don't want to use it, which is why I think that, uh, at least for the work workflow that I work for, which honestly doesn't need like super high definition, high internet or anything. Um, it's a little more chill than some of the other workflows I've worked for on the, for this project. Um, I'm kind of hoping that they're, they'll be reconsidering being like, Hey, we'll go, we'll put the go ahead for working from home and switch us to working from home, which will save me a shit ton load of money. So I know because during the pandemic, I saved a shit ton of money. So hopes and dreams. Um, during the week, I even thought about like, hey, if this just doesn't work out, I may just figure out a way to uh, abandon Austin and move back to uh, Minnesota. Mm. So that's a serious consideration. Right now, it's kind of more. Uh, I also am like really could use somebody to like uh, buddy I need a buddy system and to <laughs> to basically sort things out with my apartment maybe maybe figure out getting rid of stuff disposing of a few things of stuff I need a buddy to do it because otherwise uh, I can't trust myself to get certain things done so uh unfortunately i don't really have a buddy here in town to so be mm. help me so right but if i could like just get down to bare minimum stuff and to figure that out i'd basically be like near the end of my lease be like hey mom dad i'm coming home Hang out with my parents for a while until I can get my own, get a job and get my own apartment. Hmm. And then resume. The only thing is I would lose Google Fiber. Since no Google Fiber in the Twin Cities, but that'd be the um, Have you informed your parents of any of this? Nope. Might be a suggestion. Nope. Just to keep them on notice. Nope. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, there's that. There's that. Okay. Ding dong surprise. I'm home. And besides Forever. the fact 
Well, I mean, when if I I that's a possibility. This isn't a thing that's actually happening right now. This is a true because future unknown right now. Right. Uh, and it's it's one of those things where it's just depending on what happens with with all this that's an option this is what i've thought about but i also look at other things being like well because of certain things um i'm not ready to actually execute on any of that and my lease i don't think my lease expires until like february or something uh so i've got several okay. months but when i know certain things are happening i will and then if I'm choosing to move home, I'm going to tell them before I actually do that. But I have, I knowing my parents, they'd be like, "Yes, please." Then we can nag on you and uh, uh, shame you as much as possible. Ah, uh, but they okay. are at least reliable on being able to to hold me. So in those cases, I've got a mimosa. Okay. So collateral damage being I'm losing my job due to collateral damage. In theory. Not confirmed, but highly likely. Right. That's it. Interesting. Damon? Something is shaking on this table and it's annoying the fuck out of me. Random aside, totally <laughs> everything that has just happened. Sorry. Just... No, no, that's okay. It's your turn, anyways. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and sip my mimosa. There you go. Have a mimosa. It's not even brunch. Brunch. Anyway, um, it has been um, an interesting month in a sense. Uh, the good thing. The first good thing is um, the drama with my dad's home was settled. Um, it was sold at auction back in June. And earlier in July, I got the, uh, the attorney came to the house and dropped off the check. So it's done. It's over. Like um, the house is, was probably more than likely bought by a company that is flipping it. And um, there's that. So they are taking care of it. They're going to do whatever they need to. Um, when the rent was aside, literally two days, no, a week after I had gotten the check, uh, my brother called me and told him that our, the house's neighbors that live near that house um, wanted to know, um, wanted to contact the attorney to find out who the um, property owners are because apparently they were using their outside electrical outlets to power their stuff. Oh, without asking. oh, 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 right. oh, 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 right. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let me right. reenact what I think David looked like. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. There's the information. Um, like, <laughs> Here's the attorney's number. Please have them call them. They can get the information and then they can figure it out. Because I don't. Right. I'm out. Like right, it's right, no right. longer mine. Literally I a month check, ago. I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> nope. Not a fucking thing. <laughs> so And yet at the uh, same time, you understand the drama at her like. Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. I knew it's I like really, really, really anyway, whatever. It either it's been taken care of or they're going to be fighting. I don't care. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with me anymore. I've got the money. I'm good. Send so, them a fucking bill. Right. It is no longer then, your property. Exactly. Any way, shape, or form. And um, and the attorney advised um, that my my dad's wife's son. And his wife really appreciated that I had moved forward with this and gotten it taken care of because they knew they probably had a feeling that this was going to be an issue. So they they when he dropped off a check for them, they wanted to say thank you to me for having this all happen. So he forwarded that information on to me. So yay for that. Um, speaking of drama, 
Um, and house and shit. Um, not too long after that, um, Jim informs me that there's an issue with our washer. Like, it won't spin. Like, it'll run, the water will fill up, it'll fill with water, it'll wash the stuff, you know, do the cycling thing. But then when it comes to, like, actually spin it dry, it wasn't working. So I'm like, oh, cool. That sounds like an easy fix. So we called a company. It's not under home warranty. So we called a company. And they came down. Um, they're like, oh, hey, yeah, this this thing is broken. So um, I don't have it today, but I will come back and, um, you know, fix it. Cool. Set it up for the following week. He comes back in. He goes downstairs. He goes to fix it. And 30, 40 minutes later, he comes back up and he informs me, hey, um, you're not going to want to do this. It's literally the words that he said. Um, turns out that the... Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm just like, I'm so stuck on this moment where I'm like, I, I'm not going to what? I'm not going to want to listen to Dead or Alive? <laughs> yeah. You spin me right. round? Like, right. like... Because right. I like that song, so you're wrong. <laughs> right. So it turns out that the motor had apparently been replaced. So it's not the same motor that had been in the original unit. That motor had, like, gears had fucked up or whatever. So to replace that was going to be $900. That is why he was saying, you don't want to do this because you can buy a whole brand new fucking washer for $800 or $900. Like, you can do that. Right. Um, and it didn't, there was no guarantee that once he went into the motor and actually started looking at stuff, like if anything was rusted, there were going to be more places, things, pieces that needed to be replaced. So he was just like, you don't, you don't want to do this. I appreciated the honesty because he could have just right lied about it and right. just said, this is what needs to be done and fixed it and all that. So $300, although, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. So Jim and I went and bought a new washer and dryer. So Ooh. Yeah. We, both. we went on ahead and replaced both. You don't you don't replace one and without replacing the other. That's just usually they For good measure, just take care of both. Yeah. They go down in pairs. <laughs> and we had already had one issue with the dryer a couple of years ago, which is why we knew about this company. Um but that's fine, you know, take care of it. Um, so that means since December, you know, 2022, we've fixed a, a leak, got a water heater, takeless water heater, put another fucking roof on the house, um, replaced the HVAC, and now a washer and dryer. Homeownership, y'all. There you go. I was just going to say, are, in other words, are, are we normal? Are we saying that we are unhappy? I am not unhappy. Homeowner? This was just a fucking lot of shit that happened, like one rat, almost one rat after the other. Oh, by, and oh, by the way, you know, you're getting married. So, oh, yeah. 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 That was, that was fun. That was, that's been fun. I mean, right. One, you know, thank heavens for, um, certain things that have happened and we have we have a good amount of money like available for us this was this was ew, this was this was thing and the water heater and the hvac are on financing so we're paying those out you know individually but again um a lot to do and a lot that happened and hopefully knock on wood this is the last thing <laughs> <laughs> there's things we want to get done, but they can, they're, they've been on hold and they're probably going to be on hold for a little while longer. Um, anywho, with all of that, um, one of the things that did also happen last month, um, is, and this is the announcement. Um, I applied for and have been approved to compete in the Cincinnati leather title. Ooh. 
So I will be competing in that in two fucking weeks um, from now. Um, it was a... I have been thinking about it for a while, and it's actually quite funny. I think I was asked to judge two years ago, and I was actually thinking about competing then. Um, and I actually got asked to judge, so I was like, sure, I'll judge. And mm-hmm. um, But this time I'm actually competing. I have one other contestant with me, so she and I are competing together. Um, there was uh, a lot of excitement from the producers of the contest about um, what I'm doing and me being a contestant or interested in con- competing. And that makes me feel good. You know, um, I think both of us are really great people. And I think both of us will do the city proud and the title proud. So win or lose, I'm I'm really looking forward to what we do and what we can bring to it. So, um, yeah, so that's my announcement. And I think other than Onyx, this is like the first time I've actually said anything about it in public, for lack of a better phrase. So here we go. So maybe next month, you know, fingers crossed, there might be a title holder on the podcast again. We can Aww. we can resume the we can do another episode of the uh, title holder interview. <laughs> that we used to do. Yeah. So that's been me, Gary. Well, I feel um, relieved that your announcement was not, like, following along Jeff's line, because I was like, (laughs) okay. Like, uh, for me, uh, I went to a Pink concert. Um, The Great American Summer Carnival Tour is happening. Mm. This was planned eight months ago-ish. Wow. Um, So... Found out about the tour, and uh, and group of us went together in Cincinnati at the Great American Ballpark, which, by yes. the way, I said over dinner right before the concert, Cincinnati has the biggest balls in the world since they decided to call it the Great American Ballpark, and I thought that was, like, the most obnoxious <laughs> thing in the world. I was like, what makes you think that you can get away with doing that? To which my friends who live locally said... Well, it's named after Great American Insurance, the company. And I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's insane. Yeah. Um, so, you, by the way, so, you know, the um, the tower that the, the tower that has the crown, that's now the largest, largest building in the city. That is the Great American building. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Th- I was I was I was informed of the the naming nomenclature situation and then was just like highly amused. I was also informed that I think the Cincinnati Reds are considered the oldest baseball mm-hmm. team in mm-hmm. the US. So there is sort of a history legacy aspect thing. But anyways, I was just like, who the fuck names the, their stadium this? I was like, I can't I I could never imagine doing that. Anyways. So um Yeah, I don't think there's the- a ballpark in, in the United States that doesn't Start with some company's name and then Park Field something. I think we still have Comiskey. We still have Wrigley Field. I don't think Wrigley means Wrigley gum. No, but but that's just it, though, Jeff. I've never heard of the Great American Insurance Company. Like, had no idea that that was the name of a company. And so I was like, I seriously thought they just decided to name it the Great American Ballpark. And I was like... If, if 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 it was if somebody actually has a ballpark called Great American Ballpark that isn't sponsored by the insurance company Great America, uh, or Great American, mm-hmm. it better look like a ballpark from like like nineteen twenty. <laughs> well, this one does not. It's very modern. Um, but anyways, no, it was a. 
it was it was kind of surreal. But uh, yeah, haven't been to a concert in a long time. Haven't mm. haven't been to an outdoor concert in a few years. Um, and it was a bucket list thing. Nice. I was I've you know been thinking about as as age is coming along that there are artists that I want to go see and should probably see in person because there are others that I didn't and now they are no longer touring and or gone. Mm-hmm. And it, this was one of those ones that I was like, I want to see this concert. Um, and it was a really good concert and enjoyed it and had a, a good time. Um, yeah, it was, it was like, it wasn't everything I imagined which is just a little reminder about like don't don't like get too hyped up right you know on the on a perfect you know kind of experience or whatever cuz that's not you have no control over that so uh yeah and it was uh it was it was good it was it was enjoyable um to be with thousands upon thousands of people <sighs> So that ballpark um, holds roughly 10,300 and something, I think, I read online. And they had to block out a couple sections because of the stage setup and that, like, you can't have people sit in certain sections. I mean, you could, but, like, you'd have to sell tickets for a buck because, like, they would have no view. It would be super shitty. Um, So, uh, yeah, like, was not a disappointment. Acrobatics, gymnastics, aerial work, all of it. um, Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, choreography, singing, dancing, all the stuff happened. There was only one song in the entire concert I did not know. Um, Drew and I had tickets together. Friends of ours had tickets elsewhere, um, but nearby. And uh, it was interesting how we had that discussion about how there was only, like, for me, there was only one song I didn't know. And they said, oh, that was a song that was on such and such album a few years ago, this and that. And I was like, but what I found interesting is this one particular song that she sang she was not on the jumbotron type imaging ever. Um, it's, hmm. a pro- it's a social. I I called it the social justice warrior protest song because it was very much about women and women's rights and like you know. Well, it wasn't just women's rights, but that was the major theme, and it was also about like just like human dignity and human rights and LGBTQ rights and a bunch of stuff. But anyways, um, so yeah, no, it was uh, it was good, and it was I was so happy. My friends were like, "We'll go have dinner ahead of time." Um, and fill up because we're not going to spend 30 fucking dollars for a hot dog and a drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, it was you good. And then we turned it in. Concert anyways. Uh, oh, you'd be surprised. Ooh, the number of people that were like up and down the aisles. Cause we had seats right on the aisle and the number of people that were going and getting like nachos and like drinks and beer and you name mm-hmm. it. And I was like, we're yeah, the economy is not doing enjoying fine. the proper. Uh, yeah. They weren't thoroughly enjoying the, the concert, apparently. Or they were just no, no, no. When you go yeah, to like, a concert, I mean, maybe alcohol, but or some sort of beverage, but you don't eat at a concert. Well, it's funny because like when we walked in, one of the first things we did was we looked at the merch area, but the amount of people, it was like probably 30 wide by 40 deep, like the amount of people. And this was just the one merch area we knew of. And there had to be multiples of them throughout the stadium. So we like, right. So we walked over and we looked and we were like, oh, I kind of like this number shirt, or I like that thing, or I like this thing. And we were like, nope, not paying that price, not waiting in that line. <laughs> Let's go find our seats. Right. Like, mm-hmm. we're you good. know, and then while while the opening act is on, I'm on my phone looking to see if I could get the tour t shirt online. <laughs> because I'm like, like if I want the shirt that bad, I'll go buy it online, like say screw it. But um yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was really, really good. We turned it into an extended weekend. It was nice to just relax and chill out. Um, Yay. Yeah. And yeah. we, we got a good laugh um, because every morning all of us had to take our pills. <laughs> <laughs> so we've turned into those. 
those people <laughs> who have become of a certain age. So you get up in the morning, you take the pills. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing that you do. Uh, um, I laugh, I, I, but it's true. It is. It is. Yeah. You do that shit when you're in your 20s. Um, yeah, no, we um it was it was good to have some downtime. Um because I needed it. Work had been kind of obnoxious and crazy for about a month and a half to two months. And uh yeah, work is still work is still a thing. Um mm. it's it's a challenge. I don't know what the rest of this year holds. We're still uh losing staff. Um going to lose more staff by the end of the year these are already kind of known things um our union's in the midst of a contract negotiation the tentative agreement was declined <laughs> um so they're going back to the negotiating table so that'll be interesting mm. yeah work work, so, work 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 yeah 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 uh it's interesting i'm also picking up more hours working my second job to like supplement some expense stuff. So yeah, mm. it's been, it's been a lot of stuff. So yeah, we're, um, we're going through a thing. It sounds like we've had an interesting month, so to speak mm-hmm. of time. But yeah, that was, that was it. Well, you went to a concert and you know, a concert that I went to one concert way back in, 80s maybe early 90s it was after her second technically third album and she's gonna sing for us again yes i've seen janet jackson concert Fucker. I, I think it was during the rhythm nation two when the rhythm nation two oh so. wow yeah, mm-hmm. that long ago i was i was pretty not, young no, I'm not, I'm more just, of my just... sister was, was <laughs> wanted to go and because my, my mom was going i got to go anyways nice. beside the point uh gary what's been going on over in the x-verse a whole bunch of garbage is what's been going on. <laughs> uh, but we do have a new Twitter follower, and we would like to thank at Bear Beats Online uh, for following us. And by the way, CarMax, you've been blocked. Love you. <laughs> I don't draw the line a lot on social media, but I do draw the line when it is a legitimate business. And I'm like, no. No, no, no. Not... Not CarMax, CarMax. <laughs> David's all like, but I use that shit. No, 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 not, not, not the lip, not the lip stuff. Yeah, in no. CarMax, we may be fans of Cubs, but we're not Cubs fans. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. It was, it was random. We don't often get businesses following us. If it was a small business that was like obviously part of our community, even the broader LGBTQIA plus, I'm kind of okay with that to a certain degree. Right. But this was legitimately, I was like, what? I was like, no, I girl. Mean, I mean, if Fort Troth so starts following us, <laughs> duly noted. In the meantime. So Facebook has been busy. Mm-hmm. Boy, howdy. Uh, we are being followed now by David Pereira, Pup or so, followed and liked by Kyle Henderson, Eric Tapio Tellinen, uh, Corby Christopher, Ramon Pagan, Robert Ware, Baby Super X, Super Super. It's very super. Uh, Scott Sosa, uh, Robert Poole. Luis Enrique Acevedo Zamperano, Clark Morehouse, Cesar uh, Caravedo, Caravedo, uh, James Berlin Jr., Gant Gregory, Jackson Ronsonet, uh, Vasudev, uh, Wolf, 
Du Plessis. Du Plessis? Du Plessis. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Uh, Alex HDX. Uh, Daniel Ings. Uh, Frank Only. TJ Grady. Uh, Jacques de Villiers. I think that's how it's pronounced. I could be wrong. Please yes. correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Hubert uh, Karachi. B. Dave Gonzalez. C Cecil Oliver. And Tom Rot Rotan. Rotan. Tim. 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 Tim Rotan. Excuse me. <sighs> uh, again, it appears we are making uh, more friends abroad. Yes. I have noticed, so as an FYI, I've noticed that there have been a lot of likes from all over the place for pages um, everywhere. Like my, the leather group I belong to, we have a page and I get likes every day. We haven't posted anything in years. So interesting. It's just interesting. So, mm-hmm. But thank you all for following and liking us. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, Hopefully you're listening and enjoying the show. We do. No, well, mm-hmm. I hope you're enjoying uh, actually listening to the show on the page that you're liking. You if you are, let us know. Because all we're po- posting really is when we post the show, so. Three, six months ago, I'll talk. But we have very important people, VIPs, to talk about very important patrons. Ugh. Gary, I believe you have some patron updates. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you. If you hadn't said the last part, it would have been like, yes, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so we do want to give a shout out to Daniel C., who joined us on August 1st, 2022, last year. Happy Yay. anniversary as a patron. Yay. Also, we want to give a big round of applause and belly rubs to David T., who joined us July 10th, 2018. Wow. Congrats. Yeah, congrats on supporting us for five years. Yay. One of our longest standing uh, supporters. We very much appreciate it. Overall, we want to give uh, Big Bear Cub Hugs to our patrons at the Cubster level. We have Charles W., Daniel C., and Michael K. At the Uber level, we have Dave T., Lee, Michael Q., and Tim S., plus our buddies at the buddy level, Lloyd G., and Michael V. So we very much appreciate you helping support us. Uh, and following us and, you know, helping us keep the lights on, as we say. And we don't want to drop the mic. Yeah. Because this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to drop the mic. And you go, this is all. Wait. Skype hiccup. Wait, Skype what up. is going on? There was a Skype hip hiccup. Damn it, Skype. So we're back. It's fine. Everything's all. fine now. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to the early days. Oh, wow. And I just saw the live feed. Bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> so, so there was a couple of jokes, uh, or not jokes, uh, references to, to it. I was making a joke. Damon was also saying, saying one of the reasons why he appreciates the patrons both at the same time, so I got a little confused. I apologize. It's okay. You know, I it used happens. to have a car named Confusion. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was making a joke. We don't want to drop a mic. Because they're expensive. Because we got three of them. That's true. Speaking of, total tangent before we move on, um, I tested a wireless mic headset Uh because I've been coveting one inappropriately for a couple of years. Like just not a specific model, just wanting one. Mm -hmm. Um, And I did get a a certain model from Logitech 
and I was disappointed that it wasn't going to connect the way I wanted it to. So then I upgraded and got a better one. Um, and I used that for about a week. And then I also just returned it. Um, as much as I want the independent freedom to be able to move about the cabin, like mm-hmm. when I want to, that's not really, it, it doesn't have the quality that I want. Like, mm. The the sound quality is a key thing for me, um, especially since I need the headset for my part time job. And when I can hear white noise in the background, it just like I was like, no, oh, this is not going to work. Like I need on your end. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. So I tried changing all the settings. I Google like you know food it and looked up online like what are the options you know that would make this better or easier like have other people try to figure out like what's wrong and i got some some headway with it but in the end i was just like no this isn't working for me it was a disappointment so and you know it wasn't cheap but it also wasn't cream of the crop super expensive so it's kind of reiterating that i guess if i want to do that i might have to drop some serious coin yeah and here i got a studio mic can't see because of my dark shirt uh and using airpods yeah so you i mean that's fair like i've i this is the new headset and i think we just today finally got it to a point which is weird because right now my volume is set at um zero like you have the settings that go zero to ten mm-hmm. i went from ten down to zero you can still hear me but you said it's much better, right? I think so. Like, like that particular headset, I know I noticed the key difference. So for those that don't know, they're a little behind the curtain. When Damon and I recorded the last Cubs Out Loud drag race, he had acquired the new headset. And so I could tell that the sound was different than the last headset. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, okay. <laughs> like, it was, so we tried a couple different things. But yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's a, an improvement. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I may, because I do, I also have a wireless headset that I have it for work, um, in my office at work for work. And I might, might, um, use it next week just to see if it's better. All right. Gary, let's go back in time. We're talking about last month. What what happened in our shows last month? Uh, well, we had a busy month of July. Uh, we first did our uh, episode 700. Um, we recognized that achievement by talking about what happened in the month of June um, for what's going on. And then 701, uh, we did an MPOX 2023 updates. Let's talk about sex a series discussing how uh, it's still out there and cases are going on. So you should probably get vaccinated if you are, are a sexually active individual to uh, avoid any concerns about exposure. Because it's not a pleasant uh, symptomology. I'll just say that. Um, and then Edward Angelini Cook rejoined us for Landscape of Relationships. We talked about sex after 50. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, not to speak out of turn, but uh, we did get thanked for that um, in an indirect way. And the person who uh, had thanked him basically said, very much appreciate that as a person who is growing older and is not at that age yet. Uh, I did take away some important things. So, yay for Yay. us having that conversation. And then uh, for two weeks in a row, because it's a bear podcast, we talked about food. Hello. <laughs> um, so this was kind of spawning off of last year. We did a two part series of this year talking about state fairs. Uh, we had a very depressing and annoying first week where we discussed uh, a couple of states, but we had no pictures, only descriptions. So it was very like pre internet. <laughs> Uh, kind of podcasting <laughs> where we were like, uh, okay, it reads like this, but Where's I just don't know. Form? Yeah. And then right. the second week, uh, God bless the Midwest. We not only had descriptions, but we also had pictures. Tasty. You're welcome. Yes. 
So the second week was a success. So the takeaway is if we do more state fair discussions, we probably have to have pictures. It's just going to make it all that much better and easier. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was July. Five episodes. Nice. Now let's uh, get a uh, copyright claim and do this. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying it even shorter this time. See what happens. Because even at three seconds, still gets claimed. Not that it really matters for us right now, because we can't monetize our podcast yet. Get more people to like, comment, and subscribe, please. Damon, what do you got? So I actually have two. Mm-hmm. My first one is Ali. If you are a fan of bear films or cyber bears, um, you've probably encountered this gentleman um, known as Ali. He's been on our seat. But this was a um, picture he had posted recently. He is at BRBs269 on the Twitter or X ever. Um, but he says, not bad for 59 years old. And I will agree. Um uh that's a beautiful bear man he's Mm. he's always been sexy to me and even more so now in a sense because of just the joy that exudes from him and he's he's a nice guy i met him actually at world bear weekend in 2022 orlando yes orlando so yeah nice nice, super nice guy and very sexy and this is a really great photo of him that link um yeah Hmm? well what's that jeff that link isn't working for me the link isn't yeah oh it worked for me i clicked the link and it gave me an error huh oh now it's working thank (laughs) you Damn it, Elon. All right, so <laughs> I will say this. I am very intrigued in the jockstrap. Yes. Because it's a blend. It's a bear of a leather of, one? Yeah. Like, so uh, one, kudos. I appreciate it's probably custom. Hence, it fits yeah. correctly. Because um, mm-hmm. it's one of my biggest pet peeves. Nothing like just to hear me out, big boys. If you're gonna wear a jock strap, it should cover things up, not look like it's too small for you. Just saying. Um, but no, like this looks really good, but I'm just like really taken by the chevron like color scheme style of the bear pride colors, but then there's also like the red heart from the leather pride flag and. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, and the stripe and stuff. Like, it's just, it looks really, really good. And then, of course, he has the cuffs that, you know, each represent the two communities and all get together. It's, it's just really he good. is the international Mr. Leather Bear. Um, started in 2019. I guess it's still going through 2023. Um, so this makes sense that this is, you know, what he has had done. And it, I mean, it does, this is definitely, like you said, it is definitely custom made, um, fit for him. Damn, he's sexy. Sorry. <laughs> you need a moment? No, I'm good. <laughs> Just, like, I, I had to, like, zoom in a little bit because I was trying to check out the jock strap. Um, and I just, I really do like this. I, I agree with you. This is very well made and fitting, not just actual fit, but fitting given his titles and such. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. nice. Very, very nice. Um, let's see. Throw that in the chat because it's here. Um, next up. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this one actually came from... Oops, that's the wrong one I hit. Sorry. Come on. There we are. So this actually came from Gary. 
<laughs> but <laughs> yes. So Gary sent this to me. It was um, at the Beefy Cupcake, um, and it reads, "How's your Friday afternoon? Dad is looking to spray some tonsils, and um, it's a mm, da- daddy, sexy daddy in a um, tight Under Armour shirt and some nice shorts, and he has a hard on that he is." fucking around with while he's, you know, tweaking his nipples in a car. I'm assuming at a park or parking lot or something along those lines. And it, that's button, 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 button. <laughs> it's like one of your co-hosts knows what you appreciate. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. And just, and it's a short little like 20 second video, but it is, it's, Good, and you don't even see the goods. Like it's just perfect. Like yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. I was just reading through the comments, and someone said, "Well, I wish you told me this before I had my tonsils removed." <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I. Um... Oh, he's in Virginia. Oh shit, is he in Virginia? He's not that far away. That's that's good to know. Oh, and that's his penis. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all you have to do is look at his profile because he doesn't, he's, he's not really hiding it. Mm-hmm. Definitely not shy. Mm-mm. <sighs> anyway. <sighs> ooh, ooh, ooh. So that's, 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 that's mine. Like, yeah. Oh, he's got a cute little smile. That's nice. Yeah. Round belly, big beard. Um, round belly, big beard, nice chest, good hard nips, big fat dick. All the checks. Yep, yep, yep. That's mine. I guess we're going to Gary. Uh, yeah, so I have two. The first one is just a winking uh, face because um, when you pull up the tweet, that's all they captioned it with. <laughs> um, this is uh, at Northwest Cub 94. And I just really liked this amateur, like, kind of in the home caption, you know, kind of captured moment thing. Um <sighs> So he is wearing pride uh striped nasty pig socks mm-hmm. and a uh I don't know what kind of how to describe that ball cap. All I can think of is um Che Guevara. <laughs> um but it's black. And uh he's holding a jock strap in his hand that's like uh his forearm is bracing him against the wall, and that's it, kids. Um, but what I really like about it is that it's this he's looking back directly at the camera and he's positioned himself that you get to see his um, fuzzy bottom and his big thick thighs and his furry back um, and a little bit of, of his front, but not everything. And he is of uh-huh. course like what I coined years ago, perfect beard syndrome, um, uh-huh. which is this big, thick, luscious, like dark beard. I just really love the composition of this photo. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's good. And for somebody who apparently was born in 1994, fuck you. Um, <laughs> anyways, no, no, just kidding. He's gorgeous. Uh, yes, he is. Yeah. But he's a big boy, and he's very photogenic, and he looks good having his photograph taken. So, yeah. Matriciated. Oh, and to quote Damon, there's his penis. Okay. Um <laughs> Well, if you go to visit his Twitter and you kind of scroll through, here we have it. So, uh, yeah, just wanted to give him some love because he's a he's a good looking guy. Um, mm-hmm. Very body positive, sexy. Doesn't mm-hmm. like ask me anonymous question postings, some videos. So, anyways, that's that. Uh, moving right along. So this one, um, I called it shots that make me feel good about myself because um, 
So this is at the underscore brisket. And the full caption says, fucking love some of still shots from my recent video. It's so great when the angle and lighting position are just right that it creates shots that make me feel good about myself. I love making porn that others enjoy, but when I enjoy the end result, that's the best. Um, and I do not know this uh, gentleman, but other people I know uh, follow him. And I just really like this like three shot collection uh-huh. of him. He is nude in bed, um, looking straight into the camera. And uh, yeah, he's uh-huh. just a big boy. He even kind of gives you a little bit of a moment with his uh, legs and feet raised. Um, and then the after. Uh-huh. Uh, effect of having a good time. And he does look good. He does look like he's having a good time. And I think he, he, I appreciated the comments that he's giving himself, the compliments he's given himself that like, this was really great. And I'm really happy with how it looked. So. Yay. 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 Yeah. No, he, um, and he has this for me personally, he has a slight mischievousness mm-hmm. look about him. Um, and so it's one of those like, oh, you're dangerous. <laughs> like, like, you probably know that you're sexy and you're hot and are probably, I, I don't know, but I'm guessing purely by pictures that he has one of those personalities that's like, you know, gets him into very good trouble. Uh, <laughs> so... If my, my my mother would probably be like, be careful of that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, he's cute. He is cute. Mm-hmm. And is apparently going to be at Augusta Bear Fest. If it hasn't already happened. I don't know when it is. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, maybe it was this weekend because there's a different post. Quick stop into Costco before hitting the road. Augusta, it's been a pleasure as always. Till next time. So I get that guess it was this weekend. Nice. And it just wrapped up. I don't know. I can't keep on top of all these things. There's so much going on. Well, now that we've gone back to doing things in person and groups, what do you know? Right. <sighs> There's that. Jeff, you're muted. Yes, you are. (laughs) I hit the cough switch and forgot to turn it off. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Gary, what what, what would you like to recommend to us this week that's not uh, former Twitter porn? Well, uh, I there, I was going to recommend something else, and I'm surprised you didn't recommend it. Um, but we we've we've kind of been gushing about Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Um, I haven't fully so, watched it yet. I've just watched like the uh, the teaser part of the episode. I haven't actually like before the okay. credit. So, uh, episode nine of season two, Subspace Rhapsody, just aired this past week. Um, and then the finale episode is coming up this week. Uh, I will say it's interesting because I watched one review online and they said about Subspace Rhapsody. I'm trying to think of how I want to phrase this. How do, they said something like, if you like, you're you're either going to be in one of two camps. You're either going to be, you're going to get it and you're going to be okay with the fact that it's Star Trek and it's science fiction and it's a musical or you're not <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like it, it's, but, and it's not that it's d- divisive. It's just either you go for the ride or you don't. Um, and I will admit, like I had to like say to myself, like, this is bonkers. <laughs> Have you like, seen the rest just... of the series? Well, but I, I know, I know, I know, but <sighs> anyways, if you're into Star Trek or whatever, I recommend watching it just for the pure experience of it. Because some of the cast really can sing. I did not know that one of the cast members was, like, nominated for a fucking Tony 
like from Broadway. And I was like, well, that explains her like singing chops. There you go. Um, anyways. Yeah. So, uh, no, it was, uh, it was good. It was good. Anyways, but that, that's not really quite my recommendation. Um, so while I was on my downtime and I was on vacation, I did go see Disney's haunted mansion, the 2023 release, um, that just came out. It is based on the ride at the park. Mm. If you ridden the ride or are a fan of the ride or know of it. Um, there's a lot of like Easter eggs and an homage and stuff. Uh, Rosario Dawson is really good in it. Um, Danny DeVito, which is kind of wild. Jamie Lee Curtis. Like it's, it's, it's a very interesting casting um, that comes together. And I'm not even remember all the actors uh, and, and that, but it was, it was good. I'm really, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the group of us went together <laughs> Um And the reason why I'm laughing is so we go to the movie theater. We had just eaten recently. We go to the movie theater. I do my usual movie theater thing. I head straight to the theater. Like, we're going to scan the ticket thing. We're going to go in and we're going to sit down. Everybody Uh else makes a beeline for the concession stand. (laughs) And I told this to my coworkers recently. And they were like, but of course, you go get buttered popcorn. And I was like, no, you don't. I'm like, that's the grift. I'm like, do you not understand? That's how they make their money. I'm like, it's an exorbitantly expensive. Like, that's why you eat and drink before you go to the damn theater. It was so funny. Everybody was like, no. They were like, and then I was like, I made a crack about the movie. You're going for the for the premium popcorn. Ugh, ah, no. Um, So I I I used to go to Alamo Draft House, and I never got popcorn. I rarely ever got popcorn there, and when they do, they they serve it in a metal bowl. So I had to laugh because I made a crack about like, you know, paying, you know, five dollars for a box of milk duds. And that's what my coworkers were like, well, that you don't do. Like, that's when you smuggle the shit in. And that made me laugh because <laughs> they drew the line at the at the boxes of candy. You go buy that shit at the dollar store. I mean, fair. <laughs> that's, that's true. Like that. That I do. Like if I that were was... doing it at all, that would be what I would do. And like. I will say there's a place here in town, um, the Esquire Theater. They do real butter on their popcorn. Like, and um, the the fatty, you know, boy in me was like, ooh, and it's it's amazing. Let me tell you, like, it's it's extra because it has to be because of course, right. it's um, real but it's real butter. And it is a world of difference. Like, I'm not even joking at this. It, it, I, I know I ate, I don't normally eat a whole bunch of popcorn and I ate the whole fucking thing. Cause it was, and it was like, I think I don't get like, I got just like a small or whatever for me. Like this was the whole point was I didn't want a whole lot, right. but it was, delicious so yeah. i can't go back to <laughs> other theaters that put that fake you know oil based bullshit on theirs no uh-uh. do you know what kills me is that people are just discovering some people are just discovering that some theaters not all of them have available butter dispensers Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like you could literally take your bucket or bag of popcorn up and it's like electronic eye activated or whatever and you go up and it just like pours the 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 butter concoction over like what you're holding like this has been so revolutionary for people like it just like it blows their mind that like you could like you could could choose your own amount of butter or whatever right and i'm just like and i'm like yeah, but I, I mean, I guess for me, I'm like, because I don't care about that. And I don't want that popcorn. I'm like, yeah, it's a thing. It's there. But for other people, it's revolutionary. Anyways, I have wanted like the thing I want to do if I ever go back to a theater that ha- I know has those. I want to ask them for like a small or medium popcorn, but I want it in the larger bucket so I can dump all of the popcorn in there. And then, like, 
Uh, soak it in the butter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or get it shaken around because when you do it in like, like the... so you so you really want popcorn butter? Yes, um, <laughs> but real I, butter. I well, I would prefer the real butter. Like and that was fine. I'm not yeah. going to do that there. They in any they case. put it on there for you. But I love if I had to go to a movie theater and get that their stuff. If I was that invested in it, then I would ask for a larger container so that I can pour more of it out, all right. of it out, so I can get more of it in there. Right. So, so how I mean, does the movie do? <laughs> uh, well, before I get to the movie thing, I will say this, like, uh, this is what happened last year for my birthday. I gifted myself a year annual pass through the, to the movie program. So that's why I've been going to the movie so much um, this past year. And I will say that when I go, sometimes I do get something from the concession stand, but it's never really popcorn. Um, if anything, I tend to get a quarter pound hot dog mm. from the grill. Um, quarter pound all beef hot dog and yeah, yeah, yeah. Phallic jokes, blah, blah, blah. Like, anyways, very oral. Like, driven, and, right. Anyway. Um so it's just a little treat kind of thing. But no, the movie was good. Uh, it, I, it was fun. Um, they base it in New Orleans, so if you ride the ride in Disneyland in California, it's in New Orleans Square. But if you ride it in Disney World in Florida, it's in the um, Liberty Square. So the Liberty Square d- isn't really descript. It's kind of like an all. It's kind of an Americana kind of zone. Uh-huh. It's not a specific like city and or region where in California they've gone in the direction of New Orleans. So um like Tiana's Bayou uh like restaurant is be is opening and like so they're very much doing a New Orleans culture kind of thing, which I'm very excited about because New Orleans is my favorite American city of all time. Um mm. I love to go there like to visit and, and do vacation and stuff there. So it has so much culture, great food culture, great like uh, art scene, just all sorts of great things. So I love the fact that they base the movie off of like Cajun Creole, New Orleans, like locale, so to speak. Um, I don't want to give anything away, but like that, that's one of the the key things that kind of like roots the movie in a, in a certain thing, but it's fun. It's enjoyable. Um, there's, there's not a lot of scares, quote unquote, like, especially if you know, the, the ride, they stay very true to some of the lore and the concept of the ride. So mm-hmm. um, they put some interesting things together in how they tell the story of the the haunt, the mansion with 999 ghosts. Um, there's always room for one more. Uh, so, yeah, no, it's um, and they explain all of that. And so uh, but the visual effects are very fun. Um yeah, like I just I, I really hope that people go and they do enjoy it and they and that kind of stuff. Like I'm I'm happy and I'm pleased. I know they've had other versions of the Haunted Mansion movies before and Disney's pretty been much chewed up and spit out because they just didn't quite seem to make sense. It seemed like they were just doing a cash grab based off of mm. the concept of the property and not really um giving it its due place. And I think they have finally done that. So yeah, like and it's fun, and I think it contextually will do well for a number of years. Um, nice. I think it becomes a haunt, Halloweeny kind of like season uh, film, most likely. But yeah, so I'm just I was I was happy to to go see it. Um, yeah, so I'm yes. I'm pleased. Yay! I don't remember another haunted mansion. Uh, there's one with Eddie Murphy. I can't quite remember when that one is. Um, oh, 2003. Okay. Yes. Second and then there's was Guillermo del Toro and no, maybe not. No, there's think... only been two. It's only those two. Correct. That one and then the Muppet version. Um, There have been some other things called or based on the concept of the Haunted Mansion back in 2010. 
No. Which was a Halloween special. It was an officially movie. So, yeah. But, uh, oh, um, it's been out for a little bit. I don't think this is that much. Uh, well, it is kind of a spoiler. All I'll say is that there is an uncredited surprise actor playing a character in the film. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure. And it was, and it was fun to see the minute because you hear their voice first and then I was like, Oh, I know who that is. And then I got their name wrong, which is just, you know, <laughs> bad memory. Um, I called them somebody else. Uh, but then it was so funny and I very much appreciated that they were on. So, yeah, it was Nice. It was good. Well, guess what, folks? That's the end. Which I kind of hoping it was in a few a few minutes earlier because I already used one of the urinals. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, he's been drinking saying, mimosa, so. I, well, one. I did just for the show. In any case, where's my sheet? In a while. Plenty ways to contact us. Uh, let us know what you think of any of these uh, X links. No comment. No comment. You can do that. Uh, find those links over on our website, cutsoffly.com. Shoot us an email at cutsoffly at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 CLL Talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, X, and YouTube. At Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place in the URL. <clears throat> you can also join our entourage chat on Telegram at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. Uh, we had a brand new person join just recently. Yay. Gary was excited. <laughs> he was the only one to respond to it, so. You can also find out when we're playing or recording these shows uh, by checking out our Google Calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash COBEL. Various accoutrements, such as the Consented by Foreplay shirt, and one of our special next generation shirts, a cap, various other accoutrements, and uh, like mugs. And actually, I do have soup. Mm. Which I've been having my. Uh, which I also use for my hat dishes. Hat. Yeah, some of the designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. We thank you all for supporting us. And uh, you can also send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Audible, various other platforms. If I'm, we're not there, let me know. I'll make sure we get there. You might be able to find me on the internet. As box up, box puppy, box cut, box up there or there. I, really I mean, you can find them. The internet. Just me, that's not be yeah. active. Uh, Damon. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most favorite related sites are on Facebook. You can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>